In this video, we will discuss numerical integration, specifically the trapezoidal rule. With the integration techniques learned so far, there are many times that it is not possible or it's very difficult to evaluate a definite integral by first finding an antiderivative. So we must rely on numerical integration. In other words, we numerically approximate the definite integral. No matter the context for the definite integral, whether finding a center of mass, calculating a volume, or evaluating work, to proceed with numerical integration, we interpret the definite integral as a net area. We use a method to approximate the area under the curve. We've seen this before when we approximate the area under the curve using the areas of n rectangles. We can do this also with the areas of n trapezoids. Or we can use the area under n parabolas, which is discussed in the textbook specifically named Simpson's Rule. And there are dozens of other techniques. In this video, we'll specifically examine the use of the trapezoidal rule. Suppose we wish to approximate the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. Here we see a graph of a possible function y equals f of x on the closed interval from a to b. We first partition the closed interval from a to b using n equals subintervals using the partition p with x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, continuing to x sub k, and ending in x sub n, for which delta x sub k is x sub k minus x sub k minus 1, and given that we have n equals subintervals, that delta x sub k is the length of the interval b minus a divided by n. We could use the areas of rectangles to approximate the net area under y equals f of x on the closed interval from a to b. In this case, the heights of the rectangles are determined by the left endpoints of the subintervals. Alternatively, we could use the areas of trapezoids to approximate the net area under y equals f of x on the closed interval from a to b. And you'll recall that the area of a trapezoid is the average of the bases, b1 plus b2 over 2, times the height. Where we see, in this case, a sample trapezoid, where we've got two parallel bases, b1 and b2, and the height, in this case, is, occurs along the x-axis, and each height is b minus a over n. If we look at the area of the first trapezoid, we see that we have one base, f of x sub 0, a second base, f of x sub 1. We average those two bases, and we multiply by the height. The second trapezoid, we have the first base, which is f of x sub 1, base 2, f of x sub 2. We average those and multiply by the height. And that pattern continues for each of the n trapezoids and the height of each trapezoid is b minus a over n. If we consider the areas of these trapezoids, we see that there are some repetitions, specifically in the calculations of the areas of trapezoid 1 and trapezoid 2. We see a repeat of f of x sub 1, and that's the case because f of x sub 1 is used as a base in the first trapezoid and as a base in the second trapezoid. In the calculations of the areas of the second and third trapezoids, we see f of x sub 2 repeated. And again, that's because f of x sub 2 is used as a base in the second trapezoid and as a base in the third trapezoid. And these repetitions occur all throughout, with the exception being that f of x sub 0 is the base of only one trapezoid, and f of x sub n is the base in only one trapezoid. We approximate the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx interpreted as a net area under the curve f of x on the interval from a to b, and we sum the areas of the n trapezoids, which we see written here. And I see that in each area formula, I have a factor of 1 half and a factor of b minus a over n. I can pull that out in front, and then I have one copy I have one copy of f of x sub 0 and one copy of f of x sub n, and I have two copies of all other bases, f of x sub 1, f of x sub 2, and so on. Or I can bring that 1 half inside, and I have b minus a over n times 1 half f of x sub 0 plus 1 f of x sub 1 plus 1 f of x sub 2, continuing up through f of x sub n minus 1, and then add 1 half of f of x sub n. You should be able to develop this formula on your own. It's 
it's not worth taking the time to memorize the trapezoidal rule. So if you know the formula for the area of a trapezoid, you can use the areas of the trapezoids to approximate the area under the curve and approximate the value of the definite integral. Let's apply the trapezoidal rule to a specific example. Let's approximate the definite integral from 0 to 2 times the square root of pi of sine of x squared dx using the trapezoidal rule with six equal subintervals. Notice that this is not an integral that I can easily uh, find an antiderivative for. Um, so we will proceed with the trapezoidal rule with six equal subintervals. First, with six equal subintervals, I'll note that n is equal to six, and I can find that the height of each trapezoid is the square root of pi over three. Therefore, giving me par the partition, which I've indicated along the x-axis uh, on my graph. And I will approximate the definite integral from zero to two times the square root of pi of sine of x squared dx, summing the areas of those six trapezoid. The first trapezoid, we see looks like a triangle. And that's simply because that first base, f of 0, is equal to 0. And so the area of that first trapezoid is f of 0 plus f of the square root of pi over 3 all over 2 times my height, where my height in this case is the square root of pi over 3. So this would be the sine of 0 squared plus the sine of the square root of pi over 3 squared all over 2 times the height. The second trapezoid, we see the second trapezoid here in gray and we will calculate the area of the second trapezoid using the sine of the square root of pi over 3 squared plus the sine of 2 times the square root of pi over 3 squared, all over 2 times height. The third trapezoid, again, looks like a triangle. And it will have area the sine of 2 times the square root of pi over 3 squared, plus the sine of the square root of pi squared, all over 2 times my height, square root of pi over 3. The fourth trapezoid, we note, rests under the x-axis, so its net area will be negative. And we get that the fourth trapezoid is the sine of the square root of pi squared plus the sine of 4 times the square root of pi over 3 squared all over 2 times the square root of pi over 3. The fifth trapezoid takes a different shape in that one, the function evaluated at this partition point is negative. The function evaluated at 5 times the square root of pi over 3 is positive. So my trapezoid is partially, has a partial negative area and a partial positive area. Um, and so its area will be the sine of 4 times the square root of pi over 3 squared plus the sine of 5 times the square root of pi over 3 squared all over 2 times square root of pi over 3. And finally, the sixth trapezoid appears to have a positive area even though most of the uh, curve on the subinterval from uh, 5 pi, uh, square root of pi over 3 times 2 times the square root of pi it rests under the x-axis, but it, it has everything to do with our partition points and the fact that we chose six equal subintervals. So to find the area of that sixth trapezoid, we will evaluate the function. At those two partition points, sum them, divide by two, and multiply by our height, the square root of pi over three. So when I put these pieces together and approximate the values, I get that the I get that the definite integral from 0 to 2 times the square root of pi of sine of x squared dx is approximated by 0.7839. As with any approximation, we must ask how accurate is the approximation? What is the error? The error for the trapezoidal rule is actually fairly easy to calculate. 
And to do so, we consider the second derivative of our function. And if the second derivative of f is continuous, and we find an upper bound, which we'll call m sub 2, for the absolute value of the second derivative of f on the closed interval from a to b, then the error for the trapezoidal rule with n steps is given by the absolute value of the difference of the actual amount of the definite integral minus the approximation given by the trapezoidal rule. This absolute error is therefore written in symbols as the absolute value of the difference of the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx minus the approximation given by the trapezoidal rule with n steps. And that's less than or equal to m sub 2 times b minus a cubed all divided by 12n squared. So in our case, to approximate the absolute value of the error, we will calculate in absolute value the difference of the definite integral from 0 to 2 times the square root of pi of sine of x squared dx minus our value when we use the trapezoidal rule with six uh, equal subintervals, and that'll be less than or equal to m sub 2 times b minus a cubed all over 12n squared. To calculate m sub 2, an upper bound for the absolute value of our second derivative, we look at f of x, which is the sine of x squared. Its derivative is the cosine of x squared times 2x. And the second derivative of f is negative 4x squared times the sine of x squared plus 2 cosine of x squared. If we graph our function on the closed interval from 0 to 2 times the square root of pi, we get this function. So here we see the graph of the absolute value of our second derivative, and we see that the maximum value of our second derivative in absolute value is just less than 45. So therefore, for m sub 2, we can use any value greater than or equal to 45. And therefore, if we put 45 in for m sub 2, the length of our interval is 2 times the square root of pi. We cube it, divide by 12 times 6 squared, we get that error in absolute value is less than or equal to 4.65. If we use a computer algebra system to approximate the definite integral from 0 to 2 times the square root of pi of sine of x squared dx, we get approximately 0.4863. And if you recall, using the trapezoidal rule, we got 0.7839. So taking the difference of these two values in absolute value, we get 0.2976, which is most definitely less than 4.65. A subsequent question would be how many subintervals should be used with the trapezoidal rule if we want the error in approximating the definite integral from 0 to 2 times the square root of pi of sine of x squared dx to be less than 10 to the negative 6. We start with the same error formula. The error in absolute value is less than or equal to an upper bound of our uh, absolute value of our second derivative times b minus a cubed divided by 12n squared. We want this to be less than 10 to the negative 6, so we plug in our pieces, we solve for n, and we get that if we choose the number of equal subintervals to be at least as big as 12,927, the trapezoidal rule will give an approximation to the definite integral from 0 to 2 times the square root of pi of sine of x squared dx to be within 10 to the negative 6 of the actual answer. Let's review the important ideas to take from this video. First, applying numerical integration to approximate a definite integral is based upon approximating the area under a curve. There are dozens of numerical integration techniques. The trapezoidal rule is simply one numerical integration technique that can be applied to approximate the value of a definite integral. If you know the formula for the area of a trapezoid, you should be able to develop the trapezoidal rule without memorizing it. Approximations often require an error estimate. The error estimate for the trapezoidal rule is relatively easy to apply. The formula for the error estimate will generally be given to you in an exam situation.